Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, so, um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he came to Medina, if we continue on from the reflection on Surah Al-Kahf, when he came to Medina, the tables were turned for him and for the Muslims. There were still struggles that they went through. There were battles that they fought. Um, but in Medina, the Muslims were not persecuted. In Medina, the Muslims, they had the upper hand. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was um, the messenger of God. And he was also the ruler of Medina. And he was a, um, in if you were to look at it from a, um, from the eyes of someone who doesn't believe that he's God's messenger, they would look at him and the thing that they would say about him, this is a powerful man. He's a powerful man because everybody listens to him. He's even more powerful than a king because a king, uh, people, they don't want to listen to him. They just obey him because if they don't, he'll send them to the dungeons. But this person, he's people believe that he's the messenger of God. And so, and it's part of their relationship with God is to obey this man. They'll do anything for this man. And they did. Normally, when you have people who are important, uh, they spend time with important people. And they don't pay attention to people who don't, uh, who, who are not going to add to their power, who are not going to add to their influence. If you imagine that person with the with the garden, um, he the people that he would hang out with are people who would support his power, who would add to his influence. You just have a poor person coming down. He's not. He doesn't gain anything from them. He's not going to. He has no interests in doing this. He only has interests in supporting his own importance. The Prophet وسلم, wasn't like that. He took time out for people, even though he had absolutely nothing to gain in terms of power and influence in this world or wealth. Um, and this comes out really strongly in his relationship with children. So, um, you know, you politicians, they'll go, they'll they'll give a child a balloon, they'll do all these things, but they'll be journalists taking pictures and putting it on their social media and in the news. And it's all because they want votes and they want people to see it. But the Prophet وسلم, his relationship with, with children was genuine. So there was a child who served him. His name was Anas ibn Malik. Um, and uh, he served the Prophet وسلم, for 10 years as a child um, and uh, the and it was actually the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was honoring him and his mother by accepting him and teaching him and raising him and influencing him more than the other way around um, but so he spent a lot of time with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet was aware of his household situation so he became he became aware that his younger brother was sad. And he was sad because he had a bird. It's a kind of bird, it's called a nagar. And uh, so he had a bird and he had a bird cage and he had a bird and he used to play with the bird and the bird died. And so he was really sad and he was crying because his bird died. And so the Prophet وسلم, he asked, he found out that his bird had died. And so he went to visit the younger brother of Anas ibn Malik to console him because his bird had died. So he went and, um, and there's this famous um, statement that he made. And uh, he, said to, he said to the little brother, he said to him, Ya Abu Umair, ma fa'ala nughair. Oh Abu Umair, what happened to the little bird? So the in Arabic, this is, uh, it's, it's playful. Um, it's playful because there's a rhyme. Umair and Nugair. Ya Aba Umair, O Abu Umair, what happened to the Nugair? The other reason why it's playful is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is referring to 
Anas ibn Malik's younger brother using a kunya. Kunya is when you say somebody, Abu so-and-so. You say this in Arabic when you want to honor someone. You don't want to call them by their first name because they're somebody who, who's honored. So you, you would say Mr. Mr. Taylor, Mr. Karamali, Mr. So-and-so. And um, you know, they don't, they didn't, uh, surnames are a recent modern invention. Uh, but what they would do in ancient Arabia, instead of saying that, you would say Abu so-and-so. So it's like you're saying to somebody, Mr., and you're addressing him formally. And so he's giving him a an adult title. But it's done playfully because he's because in it, Umayr in the Arabic language, it means little so-and-so. So Fu'ail, so, it, it's the, we call it diminutive. In English, we say John, Johnny, little Johnny. Little Johnny, Umayr, little Umayr. Oh, Abu of little Umayr. Oh, father, oh, Mr. Mr. Oh, oh, Mr. Father of little Umayr. Um, oh, little, oh, little big man. So this, there's this meaning of fondness and playfulness. He's giving him a kunya, an agnamen. Ya Aba Umayr, ma fa'ala nughayr. And it, and it rhymes with the, with the little bird. And so the, this child, this younger brother of Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik, he is visited by not the president of a country, not the king, but by the messenger of God who heard that he was sad because his bird had died. And he visited him and he said to him, Ya Aba Umair, ma fa'ala nughayr. And imagine how that child will feel. Imagine if somebody is grieving, if a little child is, is grieving because their pet dies and the president of the country comes and pays him a visit and says, I heard your, your, your pet died and everything will be okay. And I'm sorry about that. And it's, and it's not a photo shoot for <laughs> the news. And so the prophet, he came and he did that and he, played with him and he laughed with him and he joked with him and he talked to him and he consoled him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and other narrations of this hadith the hadith in abbreviated form is in bukhari and muslim sahih hadith um it's uh, in other in other versions of the hadith he would come later afterwards as well and he would say the same thing to the child ya abba umair ma fa'ala nughayr and they would um laugh about it together Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is an um so the, this is who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was. We have we have snapshots of his life, like this is what he this is what happened. But these things they happened many, many, many times. And um and he the the goal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam, was to bring people close to Allah, to make them love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can just imagine how. Anas ibn Malik, the one who served the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, would have felt. He's coming, he's serving, he's giving. Even though the Prophet is already honoring him by accept, accepting him as a servant, the Prophet isn't taking him, for, taking him for granted. He knows that the bird of his younger brother died. <laughs> so imagine how he feels. Imagine how that little boy felt and what he said when he grew up. He told stories. He said, you know, when I was small, a bird died and a messenger of God came to me and he said to me, Ya Aba Umair ma fa'ala nughayr. Imagine how his mother and his father, um, Abu Talha, how they felt. Um, and they, all of them, would love the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they did. And this is why, this is why the companions, they loved him. This is why they wanted to be with him. And, uh, and, um, and and this comes because, if we take it back to the verses that we saw, the, the second person who said, But I, the great matter is that it's Allah who's my Lord. Um, when when uh, the, the humility that comes from humbling yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most perfect of ways, slavehood to God, this leads to this kind of character. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he's the most perfect slave. 
he uh, he sees everything as mashaAllah la quwwata illa billah. He sees everything as that, and he sees that Allah has commanded him to treat people well, to treat everyone well. Um, I want to say even little children, but uh, but maybe it's more accurate to say especially little children. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have any, um, so that was the, um, if you have questions, inshallah, we can. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much for that lesson and those really important reminders. I'd like to, um, inshallah, just pull up some questions that we have here for you. Um, the first one is related to the topic and it's kind of, uh, you know, about and along the lines of parenting, at least, um, is from Sister Aisha, who says, is guilt something that comes from within one's heart? Or is it something that makes uh, that someone makes you feel? My son complains of this that I'm making him feel guilty. So, um, guilt is not a um, is not a healthy feeling. Um, and so, Anas ibn Malik, the one who the servant of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said that he served the Prophet for ten years. And the Prophet وسلم, never said about something that he did but shouldn't have done. Why did you do that? And he never said about something that he didn't do but he should have done. Why, why didn't you do that? And so, what, so another way to look at this is to say that the Prophet it, this doesn't mean that the Prophet never corrected him, never taught him. He did. He taught him. He taught him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he learned. Sayyidina Anas learned from him. Um, but the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't make Sayyidina Anas feel guilty. He didn't say to him that, um, Anas, I visited your little brother, and your bird died, and I'm so important. And I took that time out and you won't even do this small thing for me when I ask you to do that. And don't you know that God has commanded you to obey me? Um, and and so if he had, so he never did that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not with anyone. If he had done that, how would Anas have felt? Anas would have felt guilty. And he would have, and, and you have, you know, and, if everybody else around him is saying is is you know, shaking their finger at him for for like the, for not uh, listening to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it would have led him to have this feeling of of guilt, and he would have complied with what he had with what he was supposed to do with this feeling of guilt. So so this is it's not it's not the feeling that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam engendered in any of his companions uh, but rather what he uh, what the way that he got his companions to do what they should have done was by uh, treating them in a way that they loved him and they felt ashamed they felt ashamed so so sometimes shame and guilt are are equated and sometimes they are we, we use them in, in in the language to mean uh, to have similar meanings but shame here is a different kind of shame this is a shame when there's someone who you love and you know that you have messed up and they gave to you and they smiled at you and you've done something wrong and they continued and they gave you even more from themselves whenever uh, whenever some whenever somebody treats you like this you feel a sense of indebtedness to them. You want to please them. And so, and 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 when and when this kind of a dynamic is there, when the when the person he expresses any displeasure or uh, or tells you to do anything, you yourself will will run to please that person because you love him. And so so, so this is why. Um, Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik loved the Prophet, wanted to be like him. This is why his younger brother loved the Prophet, wanted to be like him. This is why all the companions 
loved the Prophet وسلم, and wanted to be like him. And uh, and so so with parents, um, where we um, where do we want to be? We want to be in a situation like this with our children, where our children they love us and they realize that despite the fact that they're uh, you know they fall short, they'll they they will always have someone who loves them no matter what they do. They can always come back. They always have a home. They always and and that we give to them and we're kind to them and they feel this sense of indebtedness and love and they'll take advantage of it. They'll go, um, they won't make their bed. Uh, they'll go uh, do something they're not supposed to do. And that's normal. They all, it's, it's actually part of a healthy um, upbringing and a healthy, healthy student teacher relationship that the children, they do sometimes they go in to do something that they shouldn't have done. And but then there's a self correction that happens because of this relationship that they have with their teacher or with their parent. And it's that it's that sense of love that they have that keeps them um, connected. So um, so I don't know what you know, you know, every parent has to evaluate their situation for themselves and do the thing that's best for them and the best for their child. So I can't, I can't make that decision for you. That's something you have to do. I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, it doesn't, and it's not always the case that if a child says that you're making me feel guilty, it's not always the case that the child is right. Um, and uh, maybe the child is, is being, you know, is, is uh, not, is manipulating the situation. You know, they're not, they're and they're presenting things in in a, in a in a in a way that's not accurate and and if and you have to be able to judge whether or not that's the case but having this idea of how the prophet ﷺ was and what the ideal relationship is supposed to be and we'll all fall short of that we all fall short of that um but um but uh because we're all human beings and uh, but if we keep this example in mind that's what we um aspire towards and it also helps us understand um wh you know what's if there is guilt then what's causing it and why that's not supposed to be there jazakallah khair for that response um uh, i see here uh, a comment which i'll just share on the screen uh there's a beginning part of that. Sorry, one second. So, salam alaikum. It was really interesting to hear that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam visited someone before uh, because his pet died, um, and she was just saying, you know, for both human and animals, may Allah reward you for sharing it and teaching us some of that etiquette. Um, I have a question here that's actually in. May Allah reward you, inshallah, for listening and, and for your gracious words and kind comment, inshallah. I mean, I mean, we have another one here. What a great answer. It touched on something recently with my own child and has definitely helped me. Um, alhamdulillah. And so there's a question here, which is kind of generally on the top of, topic of kids. But uh, what are ways to ensure um, or try to try our best that kids remain steadfast and not feel pressured or have negative feelings um, for not following the crowd? Uh, the sister says kids can easily become confused in today's Western society with the lack of spiritual connection, atheism, narcissism, uh, narcissism, etc. Um, yeah, it's difficult. Uh, subhanAllah, it's, it's a difficult uh, place to be for kids and for adults. And um, and we feel pressured. And the companions of the Prophet وسلم, felt pressured in Mecca too. And that's important to keep in mind that the in Mecca, the pressure that the companions faced was far greater than any of us can imagine. Um, and that's that's not to it's not to uh, belittle the fact that we face pressure or it's difficult. It's very difficult. And what you go through, what your children go through, and what Muslims all over the world are going through, is really difficult. Uh, but it's i think it's important to keep in mind that 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 in previous generations other people also went through this and the prophet's companions themselves went through this so so 
what because what that what that gives is and again like the the specifics always return to you and your situation and understanding your children and making the best decision that you believe is um is best for you and your children it's different different every circumstance but but understanding the ideals and some and where we're supposed to be can help us navigate so so the the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when they were in mecca and they were they were facing pressure and their children were facing pressure um so say the aisha her older sister say the asma they were pressured in the worst of ways and you know it's islamophobia times 1000 uh, uh you know their their lives were in danger when because when when they walked out on the street um, but yet they uh they were steadfast and they were strong and they were not affected because because they were uh they 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 loved allah they loved his messenger and they themselves chose to they made a choice they made a choice that i want to be muslim and i want to live my life in a way that's pleasing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so where do we want to be what we want where we want to be is we want our children to make this choice themselves so by the time by the time our children are adults and adults is when they reach puberty is so when they're like 15 years old by the time they're 15 years old our aim should be as parents that by the time our children are 15 years old they are making their independent choices good choices um and uh, so it's not and when a child is a teenager it's actually it's it you you can't, they're adults they're adults it's not possible to uh you can't force them like legally you can't you know in in uh, in um in most countries in the world and if they're you know they if they believe themselves to be adults they're not going to want to listen they can they can do what they want right so uh so what what but what needs to happen is that the years prior to this the way that we raised our children needs to be such that by the time they reach this age we can set them free and they make good choices so and that means that our approach to raising our children it can't be one of protection only and i and what i i think that um many religious parents many religious communities their schools like their the way that they think about the situation is how do i protect my child and prevent them from becoming influenced by the world around them and so you know atheism doesn't exist and and uh drugs don't exist and uh, and everything don't even look at it and and don't even pornography doesn't exist and don't tell them about it it's a bad word just don't ever tell them about it and but that's that doesn't help because it's not and it's actually you we we what what it's actually not only will they learn about it but we're not preparing them to make their own choices but they needs to be they needs to be taught all of these things and um and and by the time they're they they they're at this age the way that we've raised them should be one where they grow up and they make the independent good choices despite the fact that they're in pressure um and that's um and that's difficult but it's possible and that's the that's the that's the goal and and we we need to raise our children uh we need to give them independence they need to have they need to be able to make their independent decisions early um and it's not about control we can't be uh, we have to guide our children we have to set limits we set boundaries we say this is not allowed we do all of those things but independence is good and uh often when you see when you see a child and that child um is has a strong will and they want that peanut butter they don't want cheese and so then when a parent says no you must listen to me you must have cheese you cannot have peanut butter and you must submit and you're this is bad because when when that child says i want peanut butter and i will have it they are showing their um their strength their strength of will that needs to be nurtured 
but we have to teach them to use that strength of will for good things. And that's what, um, that's what, uh, and it comes from like the prophetic way, like what the Prophet Sallallahu did with um, Anas ibn Malik, with his younger brother, with his companions. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's, uh, um, so, um, I guess these are, this is like a high level um, understanding of how to, where we want to go. Um, specifics vary from situation to situation, but that's the idea, inshallah. And uh, it's not, as long as we think that I have to protect my children from everything and because otherwise they'll be influenced and how do I stop it? It's not, it's not, we'll never, you'll never succeed because you're, we're already saying that the pow the powers are too strong for us to be able to do anything. But it's no, like Iman is stronger than everything. And the thing that the Prophet brought is stronger than everything. And if somebody has that Iman, then no matter what situation they face, they will be able to uh, uh, live through it as Muslims. Jazakallah khair. Um, you know, this next question is kind of on a similar topic. Um, and in terms of understanding this idea of of empathy and really the context under which our children are living. Um, it sounds like a parent who's asking, what advice can you give to parents who are having a difficult time understanding their children, recognizing that they were born in a very different you know, context? And uh, here they specifically cite like in a modern Western context, which maybe they're not coming from. Um, how do you first you know, understand them and then are able to lead in a way of empathy? What are some practical, I mean, I guess, advice that you can give to parents? Yeah, I mean, I think like the most important thing is just be their friend. So, uh, you know, you can, you can be, and you can be friends with somebody even when you're different. So, uh, you know, there's, um, and uh, so how, how, do you, how do you become someone's friend? When you're somebody's friend, then you understand the things that they're interested in, you talk to them about those things, you show excitement, um, there's a particular sports team that they like, you get to know that sports team, you ask them about the score, um, you, uh, you have conversations with them at their level, you come down to the level of your children, and you become their friend. Uh, so, uh, and that I think is that's what's needed. And so what, what happens is that when we, as Muslim parents, we have, what we do is we say, you know, there's so much emphasis in the, in the Quran, in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu that children have to obey their parents. They have to listen to their parents, have to be good to their parents. And so we, we, we look at those things. And when the child doesn't do something right, we say that he's a bad child because he's not listening to me. He's not obeying me. He's not taking care of me. But, um, and, but this is just, we can, you should never think like that because if you ever if you ever think like that you you'll never be able to be their friend what you've done is you've said you you have an expectation and you say you better give me that expectation otherwise uh you know and you, you might not say this but but uh but the way that you that, that that you behave it reveals this so there as parents we need to understand that the verses in the quran that say that talk about being good to your parents and when they reach old age, when they reach old age and don't say off to them. It's talking about children who are no longer children, but they're adults. They have families of their own. The parents are old. Now, now it's saying to these children who are adults and the parents are old, don't say off to them. But that's not like kids are kids. And, 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 when, and they need us they need us so they need to when they when they do things that they're not supposed to be doing they need us to help them they need us to be there with them they need us to guide them they need us to have a relationship with them so um it's actually it's all just about just about being their friend doing things with them we sometimes i think as parents what we do is we say that okay how do i fill my child's time with as many religious classes, sports events, this, that, all these other things as possible so that, but the thing that the child needs most is you. And that means that the, you, you, the child needs to have a relationship with you. 
they need to trust you. They need to love you. They need to come to you for advice. They need to tell you what happened and at school. And that's only going to happen if you have, if you take out time for them and you become their friend and it takes time. And the thing, and, and what's, and one of the reasons why we don't do that is we're so busy at work. We're so busy doing this or so busy doing that. But if our children matter to us, we have to take time out. Mothers need to take out time. Fathers need to take out time. And, um, uh, you know, and, uh, but I think mothers normally like, a lot more because the way that children um, connect with mothers is not the same as the way that they connect with their fathers, um, especially younger children. Um, and it takes a lot of giving. It takes a lot of giving from the, uh, uh, from, from, from the, from the from the parents from the mother and it's very difficult because they get tired they get and 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 you feel like you're giving and you're giving and you're giving and you're giving and they're just like whining and complaining and all of these other things so but that's 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 what you need to do like that 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 when um in this thankless job of where of just giving 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 and it's and you're not out in the limelight earning a lot of money and having your um photograph on Instagram and telling the world about all the great things that you do and, and all the other people are but the thing that you're but th that you're doing with your child is spending time with them that's 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 your door to paradise and and your your child's door to paradise and and uh, it's underneath the feet of the mother and this isn't to say that fathers shouldn't spend time they should and um but that's the that's actually it's not so so parenting is that's that's it basically that's that's what you um that's what you need to do jazakallah khair um we have a, a question here from uh from the email which says assalamu alaikum sheikh hamza thank you for discussing the second hadith from uh, anas ibn, ba ibn malik about how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, never say what you did do to this um, and why you didn't do this. Um, it was enlightening for me to hear that this happened while uh, he was a child serving the Prophet Wasallam. I'm wondering if you could give some other examples of how to guide children um, when they make a mistake or don't choose well or don't act in a manner consistent with a beautiful character. I feel like we need so much more guidance on this subject in order to be able to emulate this prophetic example. Thank you. So the 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 children need to want to emulate the prophet so before the way what happens is that it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created a propensity in children to want the love and acceptance of their parents and uh and that's something that works in your favor um, because deep down inside, your child wants your love. Your child wants your approval. Your child wants to hear, well done. Your child wants to hear, I'm proud of you. And they want that. And often, actually, uh, what ha like many, many, many um, relationships with parents and children that go wrong, it's very, very often, it's just a child um, feeling resentful towards the parent because they didn't get this from the parent. And what the parent on the other side feels is disrespected. The child feels unloved and the parent feels disrespected. Uh, so I think like, like the vast, vast majority of 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 uh, problems, it's all this is this is what it is, and and what happens. So so and then when we clothe, when the parents in the situation then use religion to tell the child you must respect me, you're driving the child away, because the the child will feel resentful of the religion because of their resentfulness to you. So. Uh, so what, what, uh, um, so what you need to do is you have to, the, that you have to understand that your most, your most powerful, uh, tool that you have 
is is this natural desire in the child to want your approval and and what it's about what parenting is about actually dawa all 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 situations of helping people come close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you when you when 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 the child or an adult even they have this relationship with you and they trust you and they talk to you and they love you then when that's there then you say look here like you know look to allah look to his messenger be like that and it needs to be it needs to be such that the child or the adult doesn't feel that you're doing it for your own selfish interests um right so uh, and so you have to you have to and that means that, that 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 the parent so the parent the goal of the parent is to make the child love them and then not want anything in return and say that your best interests is to love this man more than me sallallahu alaihi wasallam and when you do that then what then what will happen is that the child will actually love you they'll love you even more because they see that you don't want you don't want anything in return from them and that's what makes people love you more and that's that's what then takes you to the to the prophet so it's this is the essence of uh, of uh, of raising religious children protecting them and making them people or being a means to help them love the prophet so it doesn't come from telling them what to do giving them a lot of facts and um the, this dynamic needs to be there this is a dynamic that was there with the prophet and then said malik sallallahu um and and his companions and it's that dynamic that we need to recreate and when the, when that dynamic is recreated then you know they there you can give so much and you can give a lot and and that dynamic is there really strongly when they're young so when there's babies when they're babies they're really dependent on you when they're three years old, four years old, five years old, they don't. There's no outside influences. You're their everything. That it's really strong, and so at this stage, you can fill their minds, you can fill their hearts. But it has to be you. Don't turn on a YouTube video. Don't uh, don't you know put them in front of a screen. You tell them. You tell them about the Prophet Sallallahu You tell them about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You tell them how to pray. You teach them Surah Al Fatiha. Because the you can't the, you we need to take help from other people, but we can't if we want our children to be religious, we can't outsource their um, their um, religious education. Um, you have to be that person. So. Jazakallah khair for that. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an important reminder for all of the parents on on this call. Um, we do have time for one more question, inshallah. It's on a slightly different topic. Um, the sister says, I know we can sincerely repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and he will forgive us. But how does a person deal with the regret from our sins? Uh, suggestions, please. Um, so regret is a uh, good thing. It's a good thing. Um, I regret not um, giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he deserves. I regret not uh, being the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wants me to be. And it's only because I have that regret or I'm just using myself in general, right? So it's only because we have that regret that we can improve so if the regret goes away and we're happy with the way that we are then we'll never improve so uh, but that's not i don't think that's what you're asking but it's important to keep this in mind it's important to keep this in mind that um regret and fear and sadness and shame and all of these negative emotions they're the they're part of the human experience and the problem now is that um is that we imagine that 
being a spiritual person means that you feel good. But that's not what being a spiritual person means. Being a spiritual, the, the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions did not feel, I'll put the Prophet aside, the Prophet is perfect. And so I don't even want to, I can't even imagine how he felt. But, uh, you know, he was, um, he, he was with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It's different. Um, but many of his companions, as they made the decisions that they did and the way that society treated them and everything, they, they didn't feel good. But they put their slavehood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before everything. And, and so even though I don't feel good, this is something that my Lord has commanded me to do and I will do it. So the, and, 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 and I think that this is what will, uh, that's what whenever we have, um, uh, you know, an unhealthy regret, an unhealthy guilt or shame, an unhealthy uh, uh, negative emotion, then what it does is it pulls us away from, from uh, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what's an unhealthy regret? An unhealthy regret is I'm so bad. I've done all of these things. There's no point. No matter what I do, I just fail. I'm never good enough. There's no hope. So this is this is this is a situation. This is not so this is the issue here is not the regret. That's not the issue. The issue here is the lack of hope. The issue here is not realizing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anything from us and he loves to forgive and he said the prophet sallallahu said that Allah is more is happier with your repentance uh, when one of you repents than somebody who's lost in the desert they think they're going to die because they lost their camel and they find their camel and they're so happy and they say oh Allah I'm your lord and you're my slave and so so what that what this means is that when I do something wrong and I and I and I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's forgiveness. I am met with unimaginable mercy, and I have to believe this. It's part of my deen to believe this. I and and so and and so I and and the, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said that the Prophet told us that at-ta'ibu min al-zambi kamal la Somebody who repents from a sin is as though he has no he as though he has no sin. So no matter how bad we are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and mercy and generosity is far greater. That's the thing that we need to focus on. And when we, and, and, and so, uh, so reading hadiths about the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, um, and reminding ourselves of that, that's the thing that, that, uh, that, that we need to, so what, what, what that means is, and when that's there, then the regret, it drives us in a positive direction. So um, that's the, that's the, that, that so, so having this, so, so when you listen to this, it's difficult, right? So you will, um, you, it, this, this is not something that, that just by listening to this one, one time, your problem will be solved and everything will go away. No, it, it, it's, it's a struggle and we all have struggles and it will be difficult and it will, and you will, you will fall on your face and you'll fail and you'll, this is, it's the human condition. But what you need to do is you need to keep this in mind because what this does is it gives you a framework and you say, okay, right now when I feel this regret and it's something that is driving me away, where, why is that? It's happening because of this. And so this is what I need to do. And, and so you go back and you keep on doing it and you keep on doing it and you keep on doing it. And over time, as you persevere, um, then uh, it will become easier. But uh, it's important to remember that to lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that it's something that Allah has told you that you shouldn't do. And so when you believe in the mercy and forgiveness of Allah, that belief is a good deed. Just believing that is a good deed that you're rewarded for.
Jazakallah khair again. Um, I just want to take a moment to thank you, not just you know for, for that Q&A, but for all of the lessons that you've shared today. Um, our dear sister here said, this is a great lesson for most families. May Allah bless and reward you. Uh, Ameen. And one more, this is from the sister who asked the question, who just said, thank you so much for your very thoughtful answer. Uh, I truly appreciate it and has been very helpful. Jazakallah khair. MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah. Oh, one more. <laughs> They're still coming in. Uh, thank you. That is for profound. No matter how bad we think we are, Allah's mercy, forgiveness, favor, and kindness is greater than all that. So alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, a great reminder. Jazakallah khair again. Asha Hamza, it was an honor to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. Assalamu alaikum to everybody. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, we will... Uh,